Hi, I'm Rick Dior. Today we're going to talk about some different snare systems, uh, types of snares in other words, to use on your orchestral drums. Later on I'm going to do a video on just snares themselves and show you many different kinds of snares that I use on all my different snare drums. So ones that I use for playing drum set as well as ones for uh, orchestral snares. So I already did a video on gut snares, which to me are the best sounding snares for a lot of different types of music, including drum set, orchestral, and rudimental. So in the old days, uh, if you were, you know, by the old days, I mean like the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s, uh, even 60s, gut was the preferred snare until it was overtaken by, um, by the actual curly snares which look like this. Okay, just ignore this snare system. But the curly snares are just metal and they're, they loop around. Everybody has those if you look at the bottom of your snare drum. Those are most likely curly snares. So just like plastic or mylar heads overtook calf skin, those type of snares overtook gut. But if you played in an orchestra early on, in those years, you would always use gut snares. Uh, now, the orchestra drums rarely will use gut snares. They'll use a combination of cable, uh, synthetic gut, uh, coated cable, as well as sometimes uh, curly snares, and even the old silk wire, which I'll show you in a minute. So we'll do a little more history here, and we'll talk about the Hinger snare drum. I did a video on this recently. You can search for it. But these snares were some of the first synthetic cable snares to come on the market <clears throat> Excuse me, in the 1970s. So they were really effective, and this was a very, very popular snare drum, uh, which was later overtaken by snare drums uh, from mainly Pearl and uh, some other companies like Grover and Black Swamp. So the Kanger drums are no longer made, but if you can find one, it's a great sounding drum. It's a sy synthetic drum. Uh, some sort of fiberglass composite, and the snares are coated cable like that. So you should look for that video on the channel. So we're going to put these down as we describe them. Away. So as time went on, different companies invented different kinds of snare systems. So these systems had several different wires. So a good example of that is the more modern pearl snares that look like this. And this is how these drums come if you buy one. They'll have a set of coated cable, a set of steel wire, and a set of curly snares. Now what I do is I normally take those curly snares off and replace them with some coated wire or some cable. Uh, it, the curly snares do make rolls easier problem is when the French horns play or the timpani play or the Gran Casa bass drum plays, uh, any low brass or low instrument, that sets off these curly snares. So you always have to be worrying about when you're turning your snares on and off, which is a pain. So you get quite a bit less snare buzz, not completely gone, but less if you use the coated cable and the regular cable rather than the curly snares. Because the curly snares float on the head, creating a more sensitive snare response in a lot of ways, making rolls easier. But at the same time, it's not necessarily the articulate sound you need for orchestral and concert drumming. I'll show you some other ones. This is a Clevelander drum. This drum is extremely heavy, so I gotta be careful when I pick it up. It weighs probably close to 50 pounds. It is solid bell, cast bell brass. And you see the snares here, much smaller, but again, you have two kinds of coated cable, the yellow, the blue, and the steel cable. And again, I'm going to play these drums for you in a minute so you can hear the difference between them. We also have this type of snare called silk wire, okay, which is old. Slingerland used to use it on their field drums. And uh, back in the earliest days of metal snares, this is what it was. So it was a piece of silk string with wire ra uh, wrapped around it. And that's what this is here. Okay, and then 
finally, well not finally, but the last one I have here right now, is this little pancake snare, or I call it an audition snare drum, that Pearl makes. And they use sort of a guitar string for this, okay, which makes it really, really sensitive. This drum's kind of just made for auditioning, playing really soft behind the curtain, you know, because they normally can't see you during an audition. So if you play very soft excerpts like Lieutenant Kiji by Prokofiev or, uh, or uh, Scheherazade by Rimsky-Korsakoff, this is a drum that you can use for auditions. I rarely use it with the orchestra, but it's a pretty neat drum, actually. All right, and now finally, the other thing I wanted to show you, or the last thing, was this pearl field drum. Now, this is synthetic nylon gut here, and you have cable in the middle. This is a really great drum. I own several of these because sometimes I do duets or trios with my students. So I have three of these drums. This is an African mahogany special edition drum they made uh, years ago, many years ago. And I think they make a version, just looks different now. And these snares, are they sound good. They're very, very close to gut. It's better than the synthetic gut that uh, Ludwig makes and uh, Slavelin made, in my opinion. So that's an option, too, if you want to go for gut. Uh, gut snares are expensive. They're hard to maintain, as I talked about in that video. So we'll play this for you in a minute as well. Now, real quick, I'm just going to show you what some of these snares look like when they're not on the drum. This is a set of snares that came off of uh, a, a classical snare drum. And this came off of one of my Clevelander drums. I had a few of them. I've sold a couple. And the snares were switched out. So I have these. And again, curly snares and blue coated cable. You also have the option of buying some snares from Black Swamp, like this, and you'll see those are also cable and two types of cable. So you can get these snares and take an old cheap snare drum, like a Ludwig Acrylite or something like that, and put these snares on there, and that will work as a concert snare drum in a pinch. And I want to do another video where I show you how to do that. It's not complicated. Other options are these Black Swamp uh, standard cable. This is model S14CS, if you're interested. This is a good alternative to um, curly snares. It's kind of in the middle of a cable and a gut because it is metal. It's almost like guitar string, once again. And you can use guitar string on snares. It actually works. Okay, uh, it sounds very similar to this. Finally, you can get individual sets of snares that Grover makes, like this. If you have a three-way strainer, you can use three different versions of this. So you can swap out different sets of snares. Okay? So these are your options. Now normally these things will be about 50 bucks each, these little th things, so it can get expensive, like $150 when you're swapping out three groups. Um, but it is still cheaper than buying a whole new snare drum. Some of these snare drums, like the Schlegel, or Schlegel as I should say, uh, this is a couple thousand dollar snare drum, all right? The Hanger drums can't even find anymore, so God knows what you pay for those. The Clevelanders, you can't find anymore. And this drum, I sold one of these for about $5,000 recently. So they're really, really valuable, and they don't make those. Now, the Pearl Philharmonics, you can get lots and lots of these. Uh, they all, all uh, came, come with a new strainer system now that's, I guess, improved. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, just came out this year, 2021, uh, from this system. But to me, this system works great. I never had a problem with it, so I'm not sure what they improved. But um, again, they, they need to change things up so they can sell more drums. So you can't go wrong with one of these drums, okay? Uh, 
So if I was going to buy a concert snare drum these days, I'd probably buy a Pearl concert snare drum, Pearl Philharmonic. Uh, you could look at the Grovers or the Black Swamps. The Majestics are good as well, but they're a little finicky. I have one of those. The snare systems can be a little bit of a pain in the neck. So we'll play these drums for you separately so you can hear what they sound like. Now, i got to say, some of them have calf heads. The shells are different. You'll hear the snares, what they sound like, and I'll hold up the snares to show you. That is a big part of the sound, but really the shell construction and the heads are also a big part of the sound. But at least you'll get to hear the snare response. So we'll start with this snare, the hanger snare. And if you remember, this is the one that has the cable snares, nothing else, just the cable. And I'll play each one of them with the snares, uh, you know, sort of medium and then loose and then tight. So this is medium. And this is loose. And this is tight. Now this drum is fiberglass, so it does have a little bit of a ring to it. I am going to use some muffling on all the drums, like I normally do, just this little piece of leather. Uh, the drum feels really good. It's got a real snappy and kind of powerful response. I have changed out the original hoops, which are very light and cheap, with die cast hoops. So that makes a big difference. It makes the drum easier to tune. It dries it up a little. It also makes it feel a little more solid. So the, my favorite setting for this is the middle setting. All right, and now we'll go and get the next drum. This next drum is a Chagro. It's a German drum, and it's a very heavy drum, and it's bowed out like a timpani. All right, it's a brass drum. And it's extremely dark. It's the darkest snare drum that I own. The head on this drum is a calf head, it's a Lafima head, uh, and I forgot to tell you the head on that hanger drum was a Renaissance plastic head. So you see the head there, and this is the snare uh, with those silk wound, uh, they're silk snares, so they're a piece of string or silk, and they're wound with metal, okay? So it's very much like a gut snare drum sound. And I use this for kind of almost a, ten, um, a field drum type of sound. Believe it or not, uh, a lot of conductors like this type of dark snare drum sound, especially in a bright hall. So you can play this drum a little louder and it's not as um, abrasive. It's great for stuff like Shostakovich. 
So uh, normally, I only use this on one setting, snare-wise. It's got the pearl strainer, so you can adjust the snares, but they're all the same, so it doesn't make any difference. So I usually have this pretty tight like this. I'll show you what it sounds like loose. So it doesn't sound as good loose. But again, it's a specialty drum, not an all-round drum. Just a dark sounding snare drum, if you need one of those. So this is a Clevelander bell brass drum or cast brass. It's a beautiful drum, one of my favorite ones. It's unbelievably heavy though, so uh, it's hard to carry around to be honest with you. This uh, snare drum, and I'm going to attempt to lift it up here, the snares are cable, two types of coated cable, and some metal steel cable. So here's what this drum sounds like. The drum has a Remo skin tone head on there, which I really like on this drum. It does ring a little, even with this muffling, but out in the concert hall, normally you would not hear that, especially when everyone else is playing. It's extremely sensitive. And it's really not as loud as you think it would be, and it's very easy to play soft. Now that's more of a loose snare sound. Let me tighten it up here. There's only one snare adjustment on this drum, and that's at the strainer. So next we have this Pearl uh, Bubinga, uh, Pearl Philharmonic Bubinga snare drum. Uh, this is a beautiful drum, very dry sounding. It is a wood drum. So um, it's the first actual uh, wood drum that we've played today. And it's got, it's got a, a mix of curly snares, cable, and coated cable. And this is what this drum will come with. So I haven't taken these off. This is one of those special edition drums they made. Play it for you. So it's a very dry drum compared to those metal drums. So a lot of times I wouldn't even be using any kind of muffling on it. So we'll tighten the snares up a bit.
Now normally I'll play right over the snares when I play soft, like this. But when you tighten a drum like this, too tight, it has that little low end ringing. I'm not sure you can hear that. And that is not desirable. So that uh, means the drum is being choked. And when you hear that sound, you got to back the snares off. And then it goes away. Next we have this uh, pearl pancake drum or audition drum. And once again, this has three sets of pretty much guitar wire on here, okay? And again, this is made for auditions. It is not a great all-around drum by any means. It's sort of a, a one-trick pony, all right? But it does sound very soft. So if you're playing something like Bolero, It's perfect for that. Or uh, Lieutenant Kiji. That kind of stuff is great. Or even Scheherazade. Uh, it doesn't really get much louder than a mezzo forte. That being said, it makes a great military drum when you want to play loud, but you don't want it to be loud. So if you have some sort of Broadway show or something that has that kind of part, and I've used it for that, which is sort of a march thing. I played the show Bring It On, uh, that dance cheerleading show. Had a lot of rudimental stuff in there, <clears throat> and I used this for one section. Uh, that was doubled with the drum set player. It sounded really good. It was a nice different sound. There's also a lot of field drum in that show as well. So it's about half the volume of a regular drum. So that's the pearl pancake snare. This final drum is the pearl uh, field drum that I was telling you about. It's a 15 inch drum and it's about 10 inches deep, nine or 10 inches, if I remember correctly. It's a really nice drum and it's pretty much made for rudimental kinds of drumming. And it has that artificial gut, okay, that nylon gut. In the middle you have some cable, gives a little more snap to it. But I really, really like this drum, and I had the opportunity to get three of them, so I have three of these. If I take that other muffling off, it sounds like this. So in a concert hall, this sounds like a cannon. Really nice drum. It's nice and light, and uh, it is a beautiful drum. So it has that pearl strainer system. So I hope you got a good idea of what different uh, snare systems sound like. Every one of these drums I've played has a different kind of snare system. Um, they are of different materials, so we played every kind of material, fiberglass, brass, uh, bell brass, maple, bubinga, and this is mahogany, if I didn't say that before. So that's a lot of different drum shell makes up, makeups and snares. So if you hear something you like, that might be the drum you want to 
go after. Now remember, uh, your mileage is going to vary. You have to tune these things up uh, a particular way. Uh, I usually tune my concert snares that are five and a half by 14 to an A. The ones that are six and a half by 14, I tune those to a G. And drums like this, I'll tune to like an F sharp or an F. Okay, so that, that's a tuning that I like to use on, on all my snare drums. So uh, we'll see you next time with some more videos on, on some more different kinds of snares. Thanks.